Remember Yahoo? Yahoo was once worth $125 billion, and it was one of the largest companies on the planet. Today, it could have been worth more than $3.5 trillion. It would be the largest and richest company in the world. But some failures stop that. Today, we will talk about these failures, see what they are, and why it didn't work out. But first, we need to talk a little bit about Yahoo. It was started by two Stanford graduates, Jerry Yang and David Philo. At first, it was named Jerry's and David's Guide to World Wide Web. The idea would attract people, and it became a business. They changed the name to Yahoo, which means yet another hierarchically organized oracle. Their business was a massive directory of websites, and the goal was to become everything for everyone. They wanted to be the homepage of the internet, and whatever you need on the internet, they wanted to make sure that you don't leave their platform. They had Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Shop, Yahoo News, Weather, Finances, etc. Some services they developed themselves and some they bought. And some they could buy, but they didn't. This looks really good. They were basically Google. But some failures stopped that. So let's see what are these failures. You wouldn't believe it, but their first failure is actually Google. Google was a school project by two Stanford graduates, Surgery Brain and Larry Page. These two didn't have massive ambitions for it. In 1998, they offered Yahoo Google for $2 million, $1 million for each of them. But Yahoo, who at that time was swimming in money, declined the offer. Yahoo wanted another company, and that company became their second failure. Broadcast.com, a company started by the shark Mark Cuban, the owner of Dallas Mavericks and his friends. The company was a pioneer of internet streaming. Yahoo saw a great potential in that and wanted the company. The price was $5.7 billion. It was insane for that time. The deal was made and Yahoo made Mark Cuban a billionaire. Today, this deal is recognized as one of the worst acquisitions in history. Why? Well, firstly, Broadcast.com had only 500,000 users, which means Yahoo paid $10,000 for each user. The second reason is that Yahoo would shut down the company a few years later. In 2002, Yahoo got a second chance at acquiring Google. But now, it wasn't a school project, but a good running business. The price wasn't $2 million. Yahoo offered Google $3 billion. Now, Google had a good business team and a huge potential. Back in the days, it was only run by Surgery and Larry, who in truth were tech guys, not business guys. So their business guys told Surgery and Larry to ask for $5 billion, because Yahoo paid $5.7 billion for Broadcast.com. Yahoo refused to pay $5 billion, and in three years, in 2005, Google would reach the valuation of $100 billion. And this is only the beginning. GeoCities, a web hosting service you never heard about, was bought by Yahoo for $3.6 billion. But let's get to companies you heard about. Facebook. Yahoo wanted to acquire Facebook. And the best thing is, everything was done. In 2006, they both agreed on $1.1 billion. Zuck didn't want to do the deal, but his board pressured him to do it. So what happened? Why Yahoo isn't the owner of Facebook? As I said, everything was done. But in the last moments, Yahoo remembered its past deals and failures and changed the offer to $800 million. Zuck, of course, refused and the board too. So the deal was not made. The most interesting thing is that Yahoo could have acquired Google and Facebook for less money that they paid for Broadcast.com. But the story gets even better. In 2013, Yahoo was in the hunt for new companies to buy. They narrowed it down to these three companies, Tumblr, Hulu, and Netflix. Tumblr wanted $1.1 billion, Hulu $1.3 billion, and Netflix $4 billion. They didn't have money for all three, so they needed to choose one. Hulu and Netflix weren't big as they are today and the movie streaming business wasn't so popular. Tumblr, on the other hand, was. The page received 13 billion visits in April 2013 and was one of the biggest social media sites at that time. So guess what they chose and where the company is now. With all these deals, Microsoft decided to step in and buy Yahoo. 
In 2008, Microsoft offered $45 billion for Yahoo. That was the biggest offer in tech's world history. Yahoo's peak valuation was $125 billion in the early days. So Microsoft offered almost one third of their peak valuation. You're thinking this is awesome. Yahoo accepted the deal. This is an offer you can't refuse. Wrong. They didn't. They told Microsoft they were worth much more than $45 billion and the deal was off. Interesting fact is that Yahoo would be bought by Verizon for $4.5 billion. But the biggest failure of Yahoo is Yahoo itself. Yahoo was a mess. They changed four CEOs in six years and then came former Google executive Marissa Mayer. Her job was to transform Yahoo, but she didn't manage to do it. Yahoo bought over 100 companies. This is the list. None of these companies turned into a hit. In 2014, they got exposed to a hacker attack. The hackers got personal info on 1 billion users. Two years later, in 2016, same thing, but with 500 million users. Also that same year, in 2016, they announced $4.4 billion loss. The year after, they would be acquired by Verizon. Today, they don't even control 3% of the search market. By the way, Bing controls more, and nobody uses Bing. And for Yahoo email, people use it because they made it in the glory days. Yahoo was once one of the biggest companies in the world. Their stock price was $118, which was double the worth of Disney stock. Today, it is just a shell of former self. But hey, it is easy to be smart now. We can say that they made terrible deals. But at that time, Yahoo thought they were the best moves. How could they know that Google, Facebook and Netflix would become the biggest companies in the world? And Broadcast.com, Tumblr, Fall. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. Everybody is smart now. It is true that they picked all the losers and passed on the winners. But Yahoo had some good decisions. For example, they bought 411 for $95 million. And they had existing email capabilities that led to Yahoo email. They invested in Alibaba. Yahoo was a pioneer. They had first banner ads. I believe that Yahoo was a huge inspiration for many people and entrepreneurs. I mean, two Stanford graduates made a multi-billion dollar company. I'm sure without Yahoo, some companies wouldn't exist or be in the position where they are now. Same thing with acquiring them. Maybe if Yahoo bought Google, Facebook, etc., they would fall. We can't know that. By the year 2000, Yahoo had 400 services. They were everything for everyone. And I think that's one of the reasons of their demise. All companies that beat Yahoo were specialized in one thing. Yahoo was everything for everyone. Yahoo was on a gold mine. They had constant investments poured into them. But they didn't know how to manage that. Also, the dot-com bubble crash happened. Yahoo was one of the few companies that survived. But all good things come to an end. If you enjoyed this video, we have more videos like this on the channel. Press the subscribe button and hit the bell.